Hi, my name is Jay Phelps and this is Ear to the Ground. Come with me today as I hang out with London-based pianist and composer Ivo Neal. And we begin. <laughs> <laughs> we discuss his influences and inspirations while he cooks me a big bowl of pasta. And we also dive deep into his own music while we learn more about the jazz scene right here in the UK. So who are you and what do you do? My name is Ivo. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a chef, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Ivo. I'm a piano player and composer. And I write all kinds of music for different people and bands. All right. And I used to play the saxophone and I do lots of different things. But I don't really play the sax anymore, as you. As you know, I think. Yeah. I remember you as a sex player. Yeah, those days are gone. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still, I still have a sex, but you know. I am originally from Canterbury, which is in the southeast of England. Mm -hmm. um, and then I moved to London in 1999 which is a while ago now. <laughs> Did you study anywhere? I studied at the Royal Academy of Music, um, which, you know, uh, there were lots of good things about it. And there were amazing people there. I met amazing musicians, people who are now incredibly, you know, well-known, like Gwilym Simcock was there. James Allsop, Nathaniel Facey, people I've played with recently and not so recently. Um, and it was very inspiring to be in that environment around those people. Mm. Oh, stock. Just from a stew that she made earlier. Just for you. Oh no. Just to keep it. Nice and wet. <laughs> lovely, lovely. It looks amazing. Yeah, this is. What is it? Uh, ragu without tomatoes. Tomatoes. Oh, yeah. What's in there? Just carrot. Oh, that's a stock from oh. chicken stock. That looks great. From soup from yesterday. Lovely. And then here we have. I'm not really sure what kind of. Pasta this is, but it looks to me like trofie. Mm. I don't know if you've tried that ever before. I this have. is amazing Italian pasta, but this is some of my wife's pasta. Being Italian, she is very keen on pasta. I bet she is, I bet. And she has educated me to a certain extent, but not enough to know what kind of pasta this is. But I, know but I guess you don't need a, that much pasta because you're not too, you know, <laughs> you're not too thick in the guttle area. <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> so were there any influential teachers that you had, either growing up at the academy? Anyone of note that you might want to shout out? Um, yes. The main one was a sax player called Barrett Schmuel, who a lot of people in London know. He's been very influential. And he was great. At the rhythmic side of things and I think I was always very interested in that and there weren't actually that many teachers who dealt with that area of music and teaching that understanding music from West Africa music from different countries Brazilian music Cuban music and that's what I was very interested in you know music from African origin basically and a lot of the you know, there, there weren't, for me, there weren't, there wasn't enough of a connection with that. And I think that's something that's part of jazz education, you know, in, in the UK, which is just a little bit problematic. I don't know if this is a bit too... Do it. Use this, no, do it. Or is yeah, it too, yeah. No, this is good. This is good. This I'm never going to get, I'll never work again. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the of that. No, this is good, man. I, I, I want you to speak from, from your heart. Yeah, I mean, well, it's, you know, it's, get, it's connecting to that, that rhythmic side of things, 
you know, uh, learning about that music is very, it's very complicated to, to teach it, I think, polyrhythm. But also, I've always been interested in Indian music, Carnatic, Carnatic music, mm. all kinds of things. And that, in a way, was a great education. It's, I mean, everyone knows that playing with people who are better than you as well. And when I went to music college, everyone was better than me, I felt very inadequate. So that was good, that was a great education, you know. So I would always try and find people to play with, people like Julian Siegel and Jean Calderazzo. I used to go and do gigs with them, and a Brazilian bass player called Ricardo dos Santos we used to play around Brixton in pubs. Mm. And I was absolutely shit scared, you know, playing with these guys, these absolute monsters. And, but I learned so much doing those gigs. I mean, I think that was after college, though. But that was hugely inspiring. I was music is um, can be complex, uh, but still melodic, so it's not completely alienating. <laughs> and it's exciting music. Okay, is he composing a lot these days? Yes, he is. He's, he's got some good opportunities and uh, to compose for a big band, which is exciting. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Does he still practice? He does, yeah. He does always play the same piece by Bach. It's always the same piece. He's Not played. always. Which piece? Which well, piece? Which one is that? Um, uh, I play... One of these part partitas in C minor. But I'm trying to play it, he, you know, without mistakes. So, yeah, but you've been playing that for like seven years. But almost I play every day. Day. <laughs> Almost seven years, every day, the same piece. So look at as well, all these festival passes. Wow, yeah, let's check this out. <laughs> when I used to do gigs. <laughs> <laughs> so explain to us, what's this? Like, I guess this is a little memento of all the gigs, you know, that I used to do. Would a lot of this be coming from Phronesis? Yeah, I, I, I played a lot of gigs with Phronesis in these places. Is there a better way of presenting that? No better did, way. Okay. How, how long were you in the band? 14 years. 14. And we did eight albums. Incredible. Yeah. And it took you all around the world. Yeah. And I mean, you guys were one of the mo most popular bands to come out of the UK. So there's a lot to be said for being in that band, I would say. We also did some great projects with the Frankfurt Radio Jazz Orchestra, mm. which was really fun. And we did an album with them uh, called The Behemoth. I'm really proud of that album. And recently I've been writing big band music as well and can you show us some yeah i mean it's on my computer Damn. so that's what i spend a lot of time doing just writing some arrangements and it takes a long time as you know yeah very long time what do you write on uh sibelius okay. but sometimes i do it you know, pencil and paper. Look at this. He's been around, folks. This guy has been around. You don't know who Ivo Name is. Lots of people do. <laughs> <laughs> I love John Taylor and Kenny Wheeler, for example. Of course, uh, I love Django Bates as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, there was a band called Loose Tubes uh, in the 80s. They did a lot of gigs around and I think they were very well known. And they did a fair number of records and it was like a collective of jazz musicians from the UK. Really great players like Mark Lockhart and Steve Buckley, Julian Aguilas, Ian Bellamy and Django Bates as well. And they all used to write for that big band as well. Mm. And then Django's compositions were amazing and I think he's one of the few that's straddled arranging for big band and contemporary classical composition and he could he can do anything.
was talking about this earlier when I was at the academy. Some of the best gigs I did were with Julian Siegel and Gene Calderazzo and Ricardo dos Santos mm -hmm. because they were way better than me, mm -hmm. and that's that was really what I was really concerned with. I wanted to improve as a musician, and I knew what my limitations were, and I knew that the only way that I would do that is if I sought out those musicians that I absolutely it's very important. revered. Very important. And I and I went and I tried to play and I knew that I wasn't on their level and I and, and that was fine and that was really good for me because it's hum it's humbling, isn't it? You know, you you don't sound good but then you you're just around these other musicians and you get that inspiration from them. From their the way they play, the way they are, their creativity that's part that's part of being a musician and mm. if that's not there then it's, it's a shame because i don't think then there isn't that continuity yeah like from the the elders to to younger musicians and i'm not saying that the older musicians know everything but it's it's an amazing thing mm. in music mm. that you it can cross everything it can cross the generations mm. you can get 21 year olds playing with 42 year olds mm. and someone who's in the 60s as well and they can all make music together and they can they can find something collective mm. and that's an incredible thing where do you get that in any other like profession or sphere yeah you, you don't get that mm. you know it's like hierarchical so is there anything that you would impart to the youngest generation who mm. are trying to be musicians we're talking about the 12 13 14 year olds who want to be musicians is there anything that you would tell them before getting into this industry or <laughs> or, or or a bit of advice while in it um i think it's you've got to keep a cool head if you can and i'm not speaking from experience <laughs> necessarily but um just if you can keep the relationships strong with your friends and your, your musical collabor collaborators find those people that you have a great connection to you, you really like their playing and you want to develop something with mm. and and cherish those relationships I think and yeah look after yourself and other people that sounds like such a cliche but mm. it's so important and it's very very easy these days you know you have to treat yourself with respect and others with respect that's the secret to a happy life I think mm.